So um, we published this paper uh, recently. It was just a couple of weeks ago, but I would say up until for most of the world, the view was the neurons really don't use lipid droplets because they never see them. So what, what is there to discuss if they're not yeah. there? Um, but now we, we know after a hundred more years of efforts to study brains that chopping up a brain does not leave it in terribly right. functional, right? right. Well, so neurons really do, because of their architecture, they don't, they don't do well when you chop things up because you tend to lose the dendrites and the axons. And so it was unclear what physical state was left for these guys to do anything. So I, I think an important thing I want to emphasize here for people is this is this is sort of a classic trade-off in science, but in, in neurobiology, right? Sometimes you want to remove a piece of tissue from the brain of an organism in the form of a slice, or you want to grow cells in a dish because it's much easier to study them. You can go in much more depth and detail when you do study them. But at the same time, you've you've created a completely new yeah. context. And, no, things simply and, I, won't... I, and I'm not critical of this experiment from 1933. I just, it, it comes with a price. The that they, yeah. they didn't, and they didn't quite understand all the things they were trading yeah. off. And honestly, most of us never do understand all the things we're trading off as we're doing them. That's yeah. how science evolves. Yeah. So, so you have to make these experimental choices of creating this new kind of preparation to, to dig deep into detail, but also divorcing the whole system from, from the one it actually works in in an animal. Yep. Um, this, is a, this is another sort of meta lesson here is that oftentimes what we think is true or what has the most evidence behind it might be wrong because the the methods that are available to do this uh just yeah, had constraints have constraints yeah